and we're going to see if we could get it to boil. All right, don't do that. What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to build a small penny stove. These can be useful in emergency situations, if you lose power, or if you're going on a hike or camping and you want to heat up coffee or soup. If you're new to the channel, my name's Phil G. I make videos about stoves and DIY projects. So if you can subscribe or throw me one of these, that would help me out quite a bit. We're also gonna do a heat test to boil one cup of water and we're gonna see how long it takes to do that. So for this video, we're gonna use three beer cans and most videos show you how to make one with two cans, but I'll show you why we have a third one. We're gonna use the third one to do a stopper so you can control the flame if ever you wanna put the stove out. A pair of metal cutters or scissors, a pair of pliers, a little needle. You can use a little thumbtack as well. Obviously a penny, a Sharpie or a pencil works as well. Here we're gonna use some fondue fuel, some gloves, and a little punch here to make the center hole a little bigger. You can also use a, a toothpick if you want or a wooden skewer. So instead of using fondue fuel, we're actually gonna use some methyl hydrate. So if you're in the States, you probably have access to denaturized alcohol, but in Canada, this is the only thing I can find. So we're gonna try it out with this, see if it works. So we're gonna start off with our two beer cans here. So the first step is to actually mark where we're gonna cut them. So the easiest way to do this is to grab a piece of wood or even books work for this step. So just to uh, hold the Sharpie against it, just like this. It's a little wobbly there, so we're gonna turn the piece of wood around, there we go. And we're gonna bring the beer can or any type of can uh, right beside and just mark the line there. So this is the easiest way, it keeps everything solid. And we're gonna do the same with the second can here, which gives us a nice line all the way around, as you can see right here. For the third can, we're gonna leave it onto the side right now. We're not gonna mark a line because we're actually gonna cut it at a different spot. So we can carry on by cutting the can. So what you wanna do here is you don't wanna cut directly on the line. You wanna cut a little bit above. That way you can make a rough cut and then go back and reach that line. So try not to bend the can too much here. So. A good little way to do it is actually puncture the can first with something sharp, just like this. These here are probably overkill, but we're going to go for it anyway. So now that we have the rough cut, we can go and get the line nice and close. This is important to make sure it's very flush because if we keep jagged edges like this, the can is gonna rip very easily. So we wanna avoid that. So try and cut it as straight as you can on that line. And same thing for the second can. So we're gonna cut it at the exact same line there. We're gonna puncture it first and do our rough cut. And once we have the rough cut again, we can make that nice clean line. There we go, so that's what it looks like once it's cut. You can see the edges here are nice and flush and there's nothing sticking out. So the next step is we're gonna actually take our third can here and we're gonna make our stop. So what we wanna do is cut right along where the paint stops here and that's gonna become our, this piece right here is gonna become our fire stopper. So it's like a little hat that we could just put on the flame and put it out. So same thing as before, we're gonna do a rough cut and then we're gonna try and follow that line there. If your can doesn't have paint here, just cut it along that elbow there, that edge, and you should be fine.
And here we have our third piece that we just cut. So the edge is nice and straight. And this is gonna be our flame stopper. Next, what we wanna do is grab one of the pieces we cut here and we're gonna make one center hole and then four holes around it that are evenly spaced. So we're gonna use our Sharpie. So we're gonna use our Sharpie here to make the four holes, one in the center, one just above it, one underneath, just like this. So the goal here is to have these holes spaced uh, close enough so that way when we put the penny on there, it covers the holes. So as you can see, we're good to go. This is actually five cents euro. So in Canada, we don't have pennies anymore. So I have to go with a different currency, but this is a quick test. So we are good to go. It covers the holes. Now what we're gonna do is puncture these five holes we just made, and then we're gonna do the holes around the ring here. So to do this, we're gonna use a nail here. As you can see, it's pretty small. You could use a thumbtack as well, anything sharp really, uh, to make the holes. If you have a hammer, it definitely helps, or you could just use a piece of wood or anything heavy just to help you puncture the can here. I'm going to switch to this tool because the nail was too short. I had a hard time holding it, so we'll see if this is easier. There you have it, so we have our four holes here. And you wanna be careful when you do use the hammer here, you wanna apply even pressure because you don't want the bottom of the can start bending because this is actually the frame of our little stove. So it is very uh, flimsy. So be very, uh, be very careful. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out our holes where the flames are gonna come out. So the easiest way for this is just just do it roughly there, just eyeball it, go halfway, and then divide it in quarters, and keep going around like this. So this here should be good enough, but we're actually gonna add a few more just to get that intense flame there. So that's what it looks like. We have all our markings and we're just gonna puncture these to make our holes. So you wanna do a quick visual inspection just to make sure the holes are relatively all the same size because if they're not the same size, you're gonna get flames that are a lot bigger than others. So here we did an okay job. I'm just gonna fix a few here that are a little smaller than the others. So I'm just gonna Push it through a little more here. And this part you could definitely do by hand. Just be careful because there are a lot of sharp pieces on this can right now. So uh, safety first. You don't want to cut yourself. And that's what the inside looks like. We have our center holes and the holes going all around the can. A little trick when you do make the holes on the sides here is whatever you use to, to make the holes, make sure it's perpendicular to the surface, so like this. So you want to be as perpendicular as possible. And if you put your, your weight of your hand around the can like this, it's going to distribute the weight evenly at the bottom here, giving you a better support to actually puncture the hole. If you don't hold it, you might put too much weight on one side and it's just going to bend the bottom in like this. So 
put your hand all around if you can, push down a little bit, and then puncture your holes. So the top part is finished, now we're going to move on to the bottom part. For the bottom part, we're going to have to crimp the can because they are the same size, they won't fit together. So for this, we're going to use our pliers and we're just going to go about an inch and a half deep and then twist the can just like this. So we're going to space these crimps about one inch apart going all around the can and what this does is it actually makes the top of the can here a little smaller so the diameter is going to shrink a little bit because of the crimping which will allow us to fit the top part snugly onto the bottom part. So this is the result. It gives you a nice uh, shape here. And we're gonna see if we did it right because now it should be able to fit in. Again, be very careful. We have a lot, lot of sharp parts here. So just like this, and we're just gonna squeeze them together. You wanna make sure it's even all the way around, so you don't want the can to be um, seated more on one side, so just make sure it's it's good to go all around like this. And if you have a sharp corner here, which you probably will, you can take a file to file it, or you could take something metal and just rub it like this. It's not it's not perfect, but it'll get rid of it'll get rid of some of that sharp edging. You can go all the way around the can like this, apply a bit of pressure, and it's just gonna take away any sharp bits. There we go. So it's already a lot safer and a lot less sharp. If you want for these cans here, this one is a little tall. You could make them a little smaller so, smaller so they're more compact and easier to carry around. But you can also put some fiberglass in here to act as a wick. And what that is gonna do is if you tilt it or push it over, if this topples over like this, uh, that fiberglass is gonna hold in the fuel and it's not gonna leak out. But it's not mandatory, it is optional. So for demonstration purposes, we're gonna make it as simple as possible and give it a test. So remember that cap we'd built? Well, once we light this and we wanna turn it off, the only thing we have to do is come place this on top like this. So if you use a different type of can, just make sure it's the same size. That way it fits on top and covers all the holes which will kill the flame. So now we can test it out and see if it works. So I got a lovely piece of tile right here. That way we don't spill and burn the house down. We have our beautiful can stove here that we built. And we're gonna take our methyl hydrate, our alcohol, and fill up the stove to add the fuel inside. Be very careful here, you don't want to go too fast. And as you can see, the penny is not in the middle. That way the fuel can drain in the holes. And you'll know when it's full, when it starts to leak out the sides. There we go, the stove, we actually overfilled it. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to burn this down a little bit. What we're gonna do is set it on fire and then the idea is to cover the holes in the middle like this, and then the flames will come out the ring here that we punctured the holes in. So I put way too much fuel in here, so we're just gonna light it up and see what happens. Don't try this at home, this is dangerous. And we're gonna place it in the middle, just like that. I'm gonna shut off the lights, zoom out, and we're gonna see what the result is.
So the flame has stabilized and as you can see the dangerous thing about methyl hydrate is that the flame is nearly invisible in the daylight so it is actually on right now. I'm going to zoom in to show you how hard it is to see the flame. The flame is a little bit visible but it is very very hard to see. So I'm going to cut off the lights here. All the uh, alcohol in the middle burnt out which is what we want. We want a nice little stove so we can put a mug on it and we're going to do a test to see how long it takes to boil some water. So let's cut the lights. And this is what our beautiful stove looks like. So very efficient. You can always refill it. And again, if you put fiberglass inside, it adds or it acts like a nice wick. So if you do push it over by accident, uh, it is safer. And the wick also helps to draw the alcohol near the burners, so that's also an advantage. But it is not necessary. As you can see, we did not put any in this stove, and it works fairly well. So we're going to do a quick test. I do have an infrared thermometer, and I just put tap water inside a pot right here, and we're going to see if we could get it to boil. All right, don't do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test to see how long it takes to heat up one cup of water. So this is exactly one cup measured out. We're going to get the temperature of the water here, see if it works. So it's about 23 degrees Celsius. What we're going to do is put some brackets. That way we lift the can and the flames can burn nicely. So I just found these random brackets here in my basement. So we're going to place them like this. And that should be able to support the can. We'll do a quick test. There we go. That should be perfect. We're going to proceed with lighting the stove. So once you light it, you want to wait until the side flames start burning. So I'm going to turn off the lights and just show you so you can visually see what I mean when it's called priming the stove. And once it's primed and the jets are starting to burn, then we can throw the penny in the middle. You can also help it out by taking your finger and just, just brushing the flame to the side there and the rings will start to heat up. Once you see that, you can throw the penny in the middle and watch what happens. Just gonna use our pair of pliers to cover all the holes. So now that we have a steady flame on the outer ring, I'm going to turn on the light, we're going to put the can on the stove, and I'm going to start the timer and see how long it takes to boil exactly one cup of water. So you can see just after five uh, minutes, we are getting a really good boil here. So this is perfect to make coffee, soup, or anything if you're in the wild, if your power goes out, or if you're camping. So this is how effective these stoves are. If you like what you saw in this video today, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out and I appreciate that. And if you made it till the end, I appreciate you. And let me know in the comments if you want to see videos on any type of subject and I'll try and do my best to do that for you. Have a good day and we'll see you in the next one.